Meditation is an ancient practice of perennial wisdom that appears in all ages and all traditions, leading us away from egoism into love. Although it has many benefits, Don John Main always stressed that the real reason we meditate is not personal improvement, peace, not for making community, etc., but very simply for union. Meditation at its most sacred is prayer. This is what Don Main will talk about this retreat. This is what his life was about. To begin this time together, let me quote from an ancient Upanishad whose words express the fundamental principle of Don John Main's spirituality, indeed his life, and started him on his lifelong journey of meditation. I begin every talk I give with these words. The spirit who is mind and heart and vast spaces enfolds the whole universe and in silence is loving to all. This is the spirit in my heart. We have always called these retreats Father John's retreats. They are focused on his teaching of Christian meditation and they are from original texts of his retreats and talks, now in the archives of Georgetown University in Washington. His taped teachings were given in Montreal during the last years of his life. As I said, the focus is always on the silence and the meditation. It prepares us for the ultimate prayer, the only prayer the prayer of Christ, whose prayer goes on at all times, whether we are aware of it or not, in each human heart. His prayer is that torrent of love that flows between the Son and the Father, who is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. This torrent of love within which we are swept away as we are carried by Jesus to the Father. All we have to do to enter it is to leave ourselves behind. The mantra leads the way. Dom Main said that we are called not to dialogue with God, but to union with God. Called not to dialogue, but to union. We are, all of us are, called to communion, called to wake to the eternal oneness that has always been, always is. We become that which we delight to gaze upon. To be with, Father John said, is to be in love. We can only live in relationship. Love is perfect, he said when it is reciprocated. The early fathers and mothers of the Egyptian desert in the third century taught and said that God became man so that men might become God. God became man so that men might become God. The realization of this is so stupendous, so overwhelming, that it is beyond understanding. It boggles the mind. Beyond theorizing, beyond counting angels dancing on a pen, John Mayne often said that a theologian is one who prays, and one who prays is a theologian. God can only, only be known in love. This is prayer. 
and we are all called to it. This is our divinization through Jesus, whom Father John called the hinge upon which we swing back to the Father. This is our redemption. And our redemption is not an excuse, but a responsibility. I remember um, John Main having finished reading Jung, commenting that uh, what, a, what a wise man, uh, I agree with everything he said, except for one thing. Um, Jung said that it was Christ's suffering and death on the cross which redeemed us. And Father John said, it was Christ's love who redeemed us. John Main was a man of love. It was the only thing that ultimately mattered to him. And he was a man of deep prayer. For him, prayer was love. I remember one day in the Priory, after lunch, uh, our walk on the mountain, we, we, we were having a conversation, or rather I was listening and he was speaking. And um, I don't know what I ans asked him, but his answer was, after a minute of a few seconds of silence, is the only thing I know, he said, the only thing I know how to do is to love. Now, this was rather difficult to uh, wrap my mind around, and, um, and I don't know what I thought at the time, but, but it stayed in my mind, and, and I, I ponder it. And I think I understand more now what he meant. The only thing that ultimately mattered to him was love. He was a man of deep prayer, and for him, prayer was love, one and the same thing. Love is prayer. He knew this through his own experience, and this knowledge filled him with joy and freedom, compelling him to communicate it to his contemporaries with so much integrity, so much passion and urgency. The greatest sin, he said, is to lead people by the nose in religious or spiritual matters. He taught a simple way, not the only way, he said, but the only way I know to this experience. This experience that requires not less than everything. What does fullness need? I, he said in one of his talks, and he replied almost imperceptibly to himself, emptiness. It is possible to experience it, but only in silence. And it is into the silence where the mantra leads. One cannot possess the silence of God, nor should one try. In meditation, one approaches God from the inner experience of love. The only thing necessary is that we are faithful. There is an oft-repeated um, story that I like to tell, which I think is very important for us to hear. Um, in the very beginning, when I first met John Main, um, uh, well, let's just say that uh, the practice in the early days in the Priory was that anyone in the house had to come and meditate at times of meditation, at noon, uh, in the morning, and in the evening. There was no one at the door, no one on the telephone, no one in the kitchen. Anybody in the house had to come and meditate in meditation time. It was God's time. And I was returning a book on that fateful day, and um, um, before I realized, there was no one 
else there except John Main and myself. It was too late for me to bolt, and I would have had I half a chance. Um, but as it happens, we went into the meditation room and um, um, set the office from side to side, as was the practice at the time in the house. Uh, Father John on one side and myself on the other, and I was very shy in those days. Uh, and then afterwards, we meditated, and um, it was wonderful. I thanked him as I was leaving, and I said, isn't it sad, Father, that no one came? He pulled himself up to his six foot something height and looked down on me and said, Polly, remember this, remember this the rest of your life. It does not matter if a thousand people come, don't take any credit. It does not matter if no one comes, don't take any blame. It has nothing to do with you. And then he said, as long as you are there, as long as you are there. So it is not about numbers. It is about one's own fidelity. And um, this has stood me in good stead over the years. Um, when I had to meditate um, in the hospital where there was only a corpse in the room um, or 2,000 people at the conference. Um, so it has nothing to do with anything as long as one is there. So I think this is important to remember all of, for all of us meditators. The 17th century English Benedictine Dom Augustine Baker in his classic teaching on prayer, um, Santa Sophia, Holy Wisdom, says that, quote, to pray is not to think, to talk. Not to think, to talk, but to love. Now we shall listen to John Main, um, to a talk he gave at the Priory such a long time ago. But it is every bit as fresh, every bit as relevant as it was then. But before this, we will listen to a, a few seconds of music. Uh, he said, uh, which was also the practice, he said, after every one of his incredibly um, interesting talks. Um, he said, now we shall listen to the music so you will forget everything I said, because one must go to meditation with a cleared, relaxed mind. Thank you. One of the things that I suppose everybody searches for in their life is to discover a real liberty of spirit. We're constrained by so many things, by fear, and by trying to project the image of ourselves that we feel others expect. And I think people suffer a great deal of frustration because they cannot be themselves and cannot make contact with themselves. James Joyce describes one of his characters as always living at a certain distance from himself. Now what Jesus came to proclaim was precisely this liberty. The liberty to be ourselves and the liberty to find ourselves in him, through him and with him. 
Meditation is the way to that liberty. It's the way to your own heart. It's the way to the depth of your own being where you can simply be. Not justify yourself. Not apologize for yourself. But simply rejoice in the gift of your own being. Freedom is not just freedom from things. Christian liberty is not just freedom from desire, from sin. We are free for intimate union with God, which is another way of saying we are free for infinite expansion of spirit in God. Meditation is to enter into that experience of being free for God. Transcending desire, sin, leaving it behind, ego, leaving it behind, so that the whole of our being is utterly available to God. And it's in that profound availability that we become ourselves. Listen to these words of Jesus. Turning to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you dwell within the revelation I have brought, you are indeed my disciples. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Meditation is simply dwelling within the revelation, dwelling within the vision of God. To meditate, each of us must learn to be still. And that's a discipline. When we meditate in a few moments together, all of us should spend a few moments just getting into a comfortable sitting posture. And then all of us at some time, probably during our meditation, will feel like moving. And not moving, staying still, will perhaps be for us the first lesson in transcending desire. Transcending that fixation that we so often have with ourselves. And so I want you to understand that meditation does involve this discipline. And the first discipline you have to learn, probably, is to sit still. To be still. That's why it's important to take care of the practical details like 
wearing loose clothing, finding a decent chair or a decent cushion to sit on so that you can be comfortable and enter in fully and generously to the discipline. Now when you sit down and sit still, close your eyes gently and then begin to repeat your word. And the word I suggest you use is Maranatha. That's four syllables. Ma-ra-na-tha. And the purpose of repeating the word is to gently lead you away from your own thoughts, your own ideas, your own desire, your own sin, and to lead you into the presence of God. by turning you around, by turning you away from yourself towards God. Say the word gently but deliberately. Say the word in a relaxed way but articulate it silently in your mind, ma ra na tha And gradually, as you continue to meditate, the word will sink down into your heart. And this experience of liberty of spirit is the uniting of mind and heart in God. Ma ra na tha. As you begin to meditate, all sorts of questions will arise in your mind. Is this for me? What does it mean? Should I be doing this? Am I getting anything out of it? And so forth. All those you must leave behind. You must transcend and you must come to your meditation with childlike simplicity. Unless you become like little children, you cannot, cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And so, my advice to you is, say your word, be content to say your word. And allow the gift to be given by God. Don't demand it. We should come to our meditation with no demands, no expectations, but just that generosity of spirit that summons us to be as present as we can to ourselves, to God. Meditating is very, very simple. Don't complicate it. As you meditate, you should become more and more simple, not more and more complicated. Listen to the words of Jesus again. Turning to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, 
If you dwell within the revelation I have brought, you are indeed my disciples. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If then the Son sets you free, you will indeed be free. As you know, nothing in this life that is really worth having can be had without a considerable amount of self-transcendence. It's the real loss of self that brings us the joy. And meditating is having the nerve to take the attention of yourself and to put it forward, to put it forward on God, to look ahead. We are used to dwelling in a world with thousands of mirrors, seeing ourselves, seeing how others see us, constantly. Meditating is a definitive smashing of all the mirrors. It's looking not at reflections of things, not at reflections of yourself. It's looking at reality, looking into the reality that is God. And in that experience, being expanded into infinity. And that is the liberty of spirit. We're going to meditate now for about 25 minutes. Remember, sit still. Say your word, and say your word from the beginning to the end. If you want to learn to meditate, it is absolutely necessary to meditate every day. Every day of your life, every morning, and every evening. There are no shortcuts. There are no crash courses. There's no instant mysticism. It is simply the gentle and gradual change of direction, change of heart. And the change is to stop thinking about yourself and to be open to God, to the wonder of Him, to the glory of Him, and to the love of Him.